we first opened, it was meant to be a clinic but it quickly became clear that you couldn't in this setting just focus on health. It was a revolving door. You'd have people come in, you'd um, treat them, they'd go out and they'd be back again. Um, and that there was a potential in this space to really do this integrated approach where we're addressing the root causes of illness, where we're looking at what are the effects of poverty on your ability to access clean drinking water, on your ability to grow nutritious foods, uh, what are the effects of education and providing a place for both girls and boys uh, to be in school. Also in a post-conflict setting like this, creating these different ways that people can really come together. And I think that that's about the most powerful part of Village Health Works. When we ask people to come and join their hands to build Village Health Works, most of the people who showed up were women and most of the people who were working harder than anyone is were women. Why is that? Simply because of how, uh, how marginalized they have been and empowering them was key. We knew uh, women have suffered more than anyone else. Um, before and during the war, they are the ones who become pregnant and they become pregnant in a country where health indicators are abysmal uh, and becoming pregnant is almost a death sentence. The vision moving forward is to continue to expand our health services. The immediate goal is to build a women's health pavilion that will have C-section capability, that will have other ORs to offer general surgery, that will help us move towards our vision of really being a teaching and a training center. Um, it's heartbreaking right now because we have some of the things you need to be a properly functioning hospital, but we don't have C-section capability. We don't have any surgical capability. So we see a woman who comes in, in labor, um, runs into problems, and the best option right now is to send her uh, 45 minutes away, bumpy road, um, difficult journey, and then to try to advocate for her um, to get expedient care and sometimes that happens and sometimes it doesn't. What happens when a mother dies? What happens to the children? What happens to those who are staying behind? It is uh, all devastating and it is society's fault. It's ours and we turn our ears deaf and our eyes blind and that's not acceptable. Poor people deserve better than poor things. I think that there's this thought that to provide surgical care, you can just throw up a tent and get a visiting team in every now and again. And I think that's wrong. I think we need to approach um, care for people with the same sort of spirit that we would approach care for our loved ones. I think that we need to transition into creating structures that are good structures. Um, that are places that promote dignity for patients. That's our hope to change a country and to change the world. And it is possible starting from right here.